Welcome to the integration technique, integration by parts. Integration by parts states that if u and v are functions of x and have continuous derivatives, then the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. Now this technique is often very useful when the integrand involves a product of two functions and also if the substitution method fails. Now this formula for integration by parts is based upon the product rule for differentiation. If we have the product rule and we integrate both sides of the equation and solve for the integral of u dv, we'll obtain the formula for integration by parts. You may want to pause and take a closer look at this, but we don't have time right now. So the guidelines for integration by parts are as follows. We have to assign part of the integrand to u and the remaining part to dv. We want to choose a u so that du is simpler than u. Once we choose u, we are going to have to find du because it's part of the formula. Remember that du would equal u prime times dx. We want to choose a dv that is fairly easy to integrate. Once we choose dv, we will need to integrate to find v. So for example, if we had dv equal to x dx, if we integrate both sides, we could put a 1 in there. The integral of 1 with respect to dv would be v, and of course the integral of x would be x squared divided by 2. Notice we're not going to include the plus c, we'll include that at the very end. Okay, so let's go ahead and give it a try. If we tried to perform substitution here, it wouldn't work. So the idea here is we'll let part of this equal u and the rest of it equal dv. Here's our formula on the right. Let's start by assigning our u value equal to natural log x. Well, we're also going to have to find du. du will be the derivative of natural log x, which is 1 over x, and then times dx. So this is our u. So the remaining part, x dx, must be our dv. The original integrand must be divided into u and dv. So our dv would be x dx. And in order to find v, as we just showed on the previous page, we'll integrate both sides. If we integrate this, we'll get v. If we integrate x dx, we'll get x squared divided by 2. And again, we'll leave the plus c off for right now. So what that's telling us is now that we can apply the formula, so this integral is equal to uv natural log x times x squared over 2. I'll rewrite that as 1 half x squared natural log x. There's our uv minus the integral of v du. So we'd have x squared over 2 times 1 over x dx. And the hopes is that this integral here will be much easier to integrate than the original. So let's go ahead and simplify this and see what we have we see that a factor of x will simplify here, and so we're left with 1 half x. So I'll pull the 1 half out, and what's left is x dx. This is obviously much easier to integrate. We can just apply the power rule, so our final antiderivative would be notice we applied the power rule here. So our final antiderivative would be 1 half x squared natural log x minus 1 fourth x squared plus c. Okay, let's go ahead and try another one. Let's go ahead and let u equal x this time. Therefore, differential u would be equal to 1 dx or just dx. What remains would be our dv. So dv will equal e to the power of 2x dx. Now remember to find v, we actually have to integrate this I'm going to take a closer look at this one down below. To integrate this, we're actually going to have to do a substitution where u is equal to 2x, so du would equal 2dx. Dividing by 2, our dx is equal to 1 half du. So if we rewrote this in terms of u, we'd have 1 half times the integral of e to the u du. So v is actually 1 half 
e to the u, which is e to the 2x. So that one's a little tricky, but you can see why we have an extra coefficient of 1 half. Let's go ahead and apply the integration by parts formula. So we're going to have u times v, so I'll write this as 1 half x e to the 2x, minus the integral of v du. Here's our v, and here's our du. So we're going to have a 1 half e to the power of 2x, and du is equal to dx. So now we need to find this antiderivative, which we actually did down here at the bottom. So this is actually going to give us another 1 half e to the power of 2x. So when we integrate this, we're going to have another 1 half e to the power of 2x. So the final antiderivative would be 1 half x e to the 2x minus 1 fourth e to the 2x plus c. You can see that some of these problems do get fairly involved. However, it is a good review of both differentiation and integration. Okay, now we've switched to a definite integral. The process will be the same, but we will have to evaluate our antiderivative at 2 and 1, and then find the difference. Now there's only one function in the integrand, so we really don't have much of a choice for our u. Our u is going to be natural log of x plus 1. Therefore, du, remember, is equal to 1 over u times u prime. There's one r1 over u. u prime, though, would be equal to 1. So we have 1 over x plus 1 dx. That leaves dv equal to dx. Therefore, v, the integral of 1 dx would be x. Let's go ahead and apply our integration by parts formula. Again, we have u times v minus the integral of v du. Notice we had an x in the numerator and x plus 1 in the denominator and then our dx. So now we have a dilemma here. How are we going to integrate x divided by x plus 1? We could actually perform u substitution here, but instead of doing that, what we might want to do is just go ahead and divide x divided by x plus 1. Let's do that down here. What times x will give us x? That would be 1. Remember that we're supposed to subtract this quantity, so the remainder is actually a negative 1. Remember, we put the remainder over the divisor. Therefore, we can rewrite this as this difference. The antiderivative of 1 would be x minus now the antiderivative of 1 divided by x plus 1. Again, it gets kind of involved, but our u is equal to x plus 1, so du is equal to dx. So this is 1 over u. The antiderivative of 1 over u is natural log u. And since dx is equal to du, we would just have natural log u or natural log of x plus 1. Notice how we're subtracting both of these. So let's clear our parentheses and then evaluate this at our upper and lower limits of integration. When we sub in a 2, we would get this. When we sub in a 1, we would get this. Therefore, our definite integral is equal to 0 0.9095, or approximately. Okay, there was a lot going on in this problem, but it was a good one. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is sometimes when you apply integration by parts, you may have to do it more than once. We are running short on time, so I already set this one up and did a lot of the work. If we had an integral like this, our first step would be to apply integration by parts as follows. And when we do that, here's our uv minus the integral of v du. Unfortunately, this still requires integration by parts. So we can do it again, again setting it up here. Here's our u and du in red and our dv and v in blue. So when we integrate this, we're going to have another uv minus the integral of v du. So again, what's happened here is this integral here has been expanded to this using integration by parts again. So when we find this final antiderivative, it's much simpler. The antiderivative would just be 2e to the x. But we should clear our parentheses to obtain this final antiderivative. If interested, I did make another video with some additional examples. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching.